Good morning. Good morning. A bright and beautiful day. A little risk on the Gulf Coast, but uh, an outstanding to be uh, outstanding day to be in our Lord's house and worship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. So, Debbie Smith is our uh, lay leader this morning. May our Lord's yes. peace be with you. And with you also. Good morning. Good morning. Feels like a million years ago I was here. Yes, we missed yes. you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we'd like to welcome everybody here today. I see a few faces that have come from long distances. Yes. Maybe very, very cold, snowy places. Um, it's good to see everybody here today. If you'll take a moment and look at the um, activities for the week. Does anybody have any announcements, Kathy Weathers? We're going to switch up. We're going to do CWF. Our women's street meeting is going to be tomorrow night at 630. So we'll meet in the uh, library tomorrow night at 630. And then also coming up March 11th is going to be our spring luncheon. It'll be at 11 a.m. here at the church, and it'll be a pot potluck. So all the women are invited, and come and bring a dish. And Tanya's working on a little uh, painting activity for us. So we'll have some small thing to do that day, so we'd love to have all the women come. Oh my gosh, painting. Small, it's, it's poker, it's small. Little, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> it's so stressful for me, I am not that creative girl and it has to be just perfect and oh my goodness. Um, but the spring luncheon's always fun, you always get to eat, so please come out March 11th and enjoy that and CWF meeting is tomorrow night at 6 30. 6.30. Um, any other announcements? If I don't call on you, Missy, you can't come. I know, right? I'll just get, I'll just get here with my hand up. Okay, come on down. Okay. Well, actually, I do have two things. One, um, we women in the church are very busy right now because also on March the 4th, which is um, two Saturdays from now. Are you teaching school or what? What do you I mean? know, right? I can walk and talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I've got that talent. <laughs> anyway, um, on the 4th of March, we're having a card class, um, card baking class. So $10, and you'll walk away with two handmade cards made by you. So we'd love to have anybody that would like to come and join us. My other reason for walking up here is because it is time for Week of Compassion. So in your bulletin this morning, you found your Week of Compassion envelope along with a little insert telling you a little bit about how Week of Compassion helps people. Um, I have a little write-up, and then I'm going to share with you something you can make. Anyway, Week of Compassion is an incredible ministry, our church, that allows us to be active parts of God's new mercies or God's love and care made each new day. Even when there are so many people and places in the world that are experiencing pain, suffering, and despair, we can hold on to and cling to the promise that God's love and care for the world never ends. God's love and care will rise up anew each and every day. God is with us always, and together we can be part of bringing hope, love, care, compassion, and healing to the world. So my dad let me know that there are these little thanks that you can create. Yes, you have to create it because this is what you're going to find. I was like, you have to put this together. Yes, you have to put it together. So we put some duct tape on it. So, you know, any kind of tape you've got is all good. So anyway, there are a few back there. Um, so through the week, as you feel blessed, you can put a coin or two in and turn your money in next Sunday if you want. Or you can pay a check, whatever you would like to do. All right, thank you so much. What you might want to do is think back through the years. Is it only a week? Well, it's this week and next. So you might want to think back the whole year go. and think about all your blessings that you've had. So that will give you a time to reflect on how kind and wonderful you were or maybe how spicy you were. I might have to pay extra. <laughs> but it gives a time to be able to share um, with those less fortunate. Um, is there any other announcements? Uh, Jim! Oh my gosh, I'm going to call you Joe. It has been a while since you've been here. Sure, we're always going to get around to it, but we do have Ash Wednesday here at the church, Wednesday night, 
Wednesday night, 615 is Ash Wednesday services. Yep. And, and I knew even better, name. you don't have to listen to me much. Well, hallelujah. I know. <laughs> For praise. One of our snowboarders, uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Joe Stump, is going to have the message. Awesome. And, uh, my colleague uh, from uh, Eternal Hope UCC is preparing ashes and will have communion. So a time to uh, get our focus uh, on uh, drawing closer to God in the uh, Lenten season going up to Easter. Yeah. Gosh, can you believe we're already talking about that? Yes, I can. It was like a minute ago. I haven't taken all my Christmas crap down yet, so <laughs> might need to get on the ball. <laughs> um, so plan to come to um, those service for Wednesday night because it will be a very meaning meaningful time to move us into Lent. Um, any other announcements? Let us start our worship. sing verses 1 and 3. Yes. <laughs> so, um, what other blessings do we have to share today? Okay, Wes. Well, this week, uh, a couple of grandkids uh, said, Grammy, come see us. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to go with Kathy, too. So, we're going to go see the grandkids this week. Yay. Wonderful. Yeah. That should be challenging and fun. 
Um, others. Well, we're glad to be back. Yes. And we're out of the snow, so we don't mind this cold. <laughs> Great. Uh, it took a little bit. Don't have to shovel coal. <laughs> don't have to shovel coal? Cold. Cold. Oh, cold. Okay. So, yes, our uh, uh, visitors from the way north, newbies, and uh, have some more Hoosiers sprinkling around. So, uh, that's great. Others? Debbie Smith? Um, as you all know, my mom passed away, but we had a beautiful, it wasn't a service, but we had like, it was an open house. We did it for church, and we had so many people come through. It was a blessing. Yes. Yes. You, you know, through one's life, if you uh, reap the seeds of love, that's what you harvest when, when, uh, you move on to uh, our goal. Right. <laughs> our so. sister, sister did we get to kid each other a few times. So otherwise we got along just great. <laughs> well, well, siblings are, are able to do that, I understand. Even though we're in the 60s, but. Okay. So. Hey. From our first service, uh, we had some prayer concerns shared. Uh, once again, the, the McConnells, uh, nephew uh, balancing out uh, bipolar meds. His name is Julius. Uh, Mary Jo Brown uh, shared about her granddaughter uh, Kira Seepman recovering from surgery and uh, her um, Kara's mother who was um, having uh, some distress with her parents who are uh, who are facing health declines as well. Uh, Chris Myers' aunt passed away. Her name is Linda Moody, and um, that uh, gives us a little bit of an update. Uh, Dan Kruger came home from his hospital stay at the first part of last week as well. Um, may we be in a spirit of prayer, and our Lord be with you. With you, with you also. also. Loving God, uh, <clears throat> singing the song Morning is Broken calls us to a time to be refreshed in your presence. Um, the uh, visions that we have in our minds about your creation uh, remind us how you love us and how uh, we are really blessed to, to live in a, a beautiful corner of the world here. More blessed, though, to uh, be reminded of your uh, gift of grace that we experience every day and your gift of forgiveness as we confess our sins. You indeed are faithful and just and cleanse us from our unrighteousness and recreating the uh, salvation experience and the, the joy that we have within that. We come to worship, Lord, and, and put our requests into your care, realizing that uh, you are there. You, you help in the process, whatever uh, your will may be. Many times we don't understand, but we trust. As we trust, we, we know that you will help us navigate our way and, and persevere in difficult times and um, celebrate uh, the gift of life in other times. Some of our requests have been shared. Others may be on the hearts of our uh, brothers and sisters in Christ uh, to be shared this morning. Audrey? Uh, well, this week will be a busy week for the both of us. Of course, this past Thursday, they canceled this one appointment we have this Thursday for, uh, it's a sleep study at home for him. But tomorrow is his biopsy to figure out, I guess, the progression of all of this with the Parkinson's. And I, I'll be a little closer to God on Wednesday when they do my physical therapy. I'm sure I'll be saying a few words, asking God, <laughs> talking to God. 
Lord, we pray for Ken and Audrey as they have uh, various doctors, care, uh, tests, therapies. Lord, we pray for their safety in transit as well. Lord, hear Lord, our Lord. prayers. Did you? <clears throat> um, Bethany is online and she just wants me to tell you hi. My, my daughter Bethany from uh, Nashville. I give thanks for uh, for my family. Yeah. Lord, 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 hear our prayers. prayers. Yes, Judy. Lord, we pray uh, along with Judy for her neighbor Julie uh, and the likely surgery for for uh, gallstones. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Deb? Um, keep that in your prayers. He is better, but still has a little ways to go. He's lost a lot of weight, so we're trying to, I'm trying to fatten him up. He has tried to work. Obviously, it works, but. Lord, we pray for Ed as he continues to um, work his way through uh, the illness that he's had. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayers. Some medical tests coming up this week. Okay. Lord, we pray along with Vicki and, and uh, for the tests that she faces this week. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. My sister Debbie's been fighting uh, cold, sinus, and I don't know exactly what else. All it is, but uh, for over a week now, and she's been really having a problem. So please uh, give her some prayers. Lord, we pray along with Connie for her sister Debbie uh, that she may uh, persevere through uh, the illness that she's uh, dealt with this past week as well. Lord, hear our prayers. Bill. Prayers for my mom. She's 94 and she's having trouble getting around. She stumbles in the wall. Lord, we pray along with Bill as, uh, as his mother Sue um, is having difficulty with uh, balance and mobility. Lord, Lord uh, hear our prayers. Betty? You said Doug? Doug. Hmm. Hmm. Lord, we pray along with Betty and her family for her nephew, Doug, um, diagnosed and, and facing a challenge with cancer. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. these still moments, Lord. We know you hear our hearts, you know our thoughts, and uh, and walk beside us, carry us when we need to be carried. Continuing in prayer, we also remember the words of prayer that you shared with your disciples. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Find us the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our choir ensemble uh, is going to share perhaps one of your favorite songs, talking uh, about God's care for us. Wonder 
duress. Oh. I've never sung it before, so <laughs> you're a wrong note. Probably me.
<laughs> this is no hard words. Matthew 5, 13 through 20. Oh, wow, it is one. Just seven verses. <laughs> okay, it's uh, Matthew 5, 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives you light to all in your house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. May God add his blessing to this reading. Whether you realize it or not, Deb, you were mentioned two weeks ago. Oh, were you? Was I? Yes, you were. Uh, people thought about you when uh, the scripture was the two verses at the start of chapter 5. <laughs> yes, you should. It's part of the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. And so the last two weeks we've been talking about uh, the blessings uh, of the Sermon on the Mount. But Jesus shifts gears a little bit today and tells his listeners, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. He did not say, someday in the future, you will be the salt of the earth. Jesus told them they were already the salt of the earth. And again, he didn't say, someday in the future, if you do all that I tell you to do, you'll be the light of the world. If you work hard all your life, you'll be the light of the world. No, he says, you are the light of the world. So we want to consider these two metaphors and, um, and think about them a little bit, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. In the ancient world, salt was a valuable commodity. Salt does not come in salt shakers, of course. Workers actually were paid with salt. So, and okay, interesting footnote as an aside, the word salary comes from salt. And perhaps if you are as old as I am, you may remember someone saying, you are not worth your salt, or you are worth your salt. Persons wanting to buy something would pay in salt in the same way that we use money or maybe credit cards in this day. But people treasured salt like they treasured, like we treasure gold or silver. Salt was also, of course, used to preserve food. Persons who butcher their own meat often use salt to preserve it today, even today. And salt, and you will cringe at this, salt was used as an antiseptic to clean out wounds. Yeah. Mm, yes. Sounds very painful, but it was effective. Cleaning out a wound with salt was very effective in fighting infection. Perhaps the most important thing about salt, that in its purest form, it never loses its taste. If you store salt, it does not get stale. This was a lesson that Jesus wanted his listeners to know. There's a father once who wanted to teach his son about being saltiest, the saltiness. So he uh, took a, a bowl of water to his son and said, I want you to get some salt and stir it in a little bit. 
and we'll let it sit overnight. They did. And then in the morning, he brought the bowl and, and called the son and says, take a sip from this side over here. What does it taste like? Salt. So take a sip from the other side. What does it taste like? Salt. If you take a, a little drip from the middle, what does it taste like? Salt. So you, you salt is always there. And then he told his son, so go pour it on the sidewalk, and we'll see what happens when the water evaporates. The salt was left. Salt is always salt, unless, Jesus says, you turn back. Hmm. And it's a strong statement here. If you have lost your saltiness, and you, and you say, well, Roger, you just told me salt never loses its taste. But back in the day, salt was harvested along with other um, impurities. Uh, what's the word I was looking for? Uh, natural impurities, natural substances. And those did go bad. And it affected the salt. So in that way, the salt did lose its taste. Bad news. Because if the salt lost its taste, it wasn't any good. You throw it out. You trample it under your feet. In fact, Luke was a little more pointed from his version of this illustration. He says, it is fit neither for soil nor for the manure pile. <laughs> they throw it away. So we are to take this illustration very seriously. You are the salt of the earth. Secondly, he says, you are the light of the world. And he tells about a city being on a hill. If the lights are on, you can see it from all around the, uh, the area set up on a hill. So he also talks about if you, if you have a light, if you light something, you don't hide it. Most of us can remember from our vacation Bible school days, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This is where it comes from. Hide it under a bushel? No. no. I'm going to let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out? I'm going to let it shine. Jesus is saying what we do ought to be visible to other people living in our community, living in our world. It should not be hidden where no one sees it. A writer and a pastor uh, named Warren Hudson of Ontario, Canada talks about uh, an evening service and a thunderstorm was very, uh, uh, very um, intense. And it unleashed some bolts of lightning and it uh, took out the power, not only at the church, but all around the neighborhood. So the pastor made his way to the kitchen where the candles were, brought a box of candles, they passed them all out, they lit the candle and they had something about like what we do on Christmas Eve. Person to person to person. And soon, the uh, sanctuary was lit. It was an intense storm, and so the people started to look out the windows, and there were no lights uh, around the town. But they were safe with light in the sanctuary. And Pastor Hudson writes, I looked out to my congregation, and I thought, hmm, it's nice to have the light inside the church, but... What about those people out there? Could we take some light and help them along the way? And he took it a step further and he says, many times I have that decision whether to stay in the comfort of the church lighted with the people that, uh, that are worshiping with me or do I take it out? Do I take it out into the world? It's a temptation that we do face every day because it's a lot harder to venture out in faith into the storms of the world. 
Hmm. So what we need to see, I believe, this morning is that the salt of the earth and the light of the world compel us to live to a higher standard. Jesus warned his followers, I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. For me, that's pretty unnerving, is it not? Because Jesus had his problems with the scribes and Pharisees, but they were the nicest, most religious people of that day. They loved to debate the fine points of the law. They had the rules and regulations that backed up the Torah. They lived in strict observance to those rules and regulations. And they thought, if I could live out my life to the letter of the law, I will be found right in God's eyes. Jesus, though, pointed to a higher law the law of love. And I believe that's what he wants us to see today, that the law of love is above and exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and scribes. In fact, I guess, to paraphrase, he might say, you are to out-love everybody to show that you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Hmm. But there is a little bit of a glitch to all this. Sometimes, as I alluded to earlier, salt burns and light glares. So if we are the salt of the earth, the light of the world, sometimes we're going to make people uncomfortable. We might even offend people. The former... Uh, uh, dean of uh, Duke Divinity School, uh, Will Willeman, tells a story about a group of church women. Men, we know that the, that the church ladies are the movers and shakers of the church, right? Yeah, yeah. They tell us in seminary, seriously, <laughs> beware, don't cross the ladies group. <laughs> Darn right. That's right. <laughs> it's almost as if Jesus would say, he who has ears, let him hear. Well, there's a group of ladies who uh, were from Pine Mountain. And Pine Mountain, I guess, in their day, was a place uh, for spring breakers and summer vacations. And young people would go and uh, carouse and party at a some of them would run afoul with the law and would be jailed. Well, Pine Mountain had an antiquated little jail, but it was always filled with people awaiting, young people awaiting bails or fines. So, one of the women of the church thought it'd be nice if they would do something for these young people. You know, Jesus says, visit the people in jail. So they made toiletry kits, toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, shampoo, and a piece of candy to make their stay a little bit brighter. Well, the ladies went to the jail, and actually they were somewhat taken aback by the conditions in the jail. The first thing that impressed the women was the sheer number of prisoners, at least 30 a week in that little jail. Secondly, they discovered that the city collected in that day over $100,000 a year from the jail operations. And the women were shocked at the procedures in the jail. No distinction between young and old, between first-time offenders and repeat offenders. And one of the women back at church stood up at a worship service and said that she was beginning to feel that our city jail is a disgrace. So the more time the women spent helping the unfortunate people in jail, the more they saw things that they didn't like. They saw things that only a few of the citizens of Pine Mountain had seen. And they noticed the attitude 
of the police toward their work and saw signs of excessive force. They heard rumors of money changing hands in order to get people lighter sentences. They didn't like what they saw. And that's when the trouble really began. Mm -hmm. The ladies group from the church went to share their concerns with the jailer. The jailer, who I assume is male, <laughs> <laughs> said, I knew we were asking for trouble when we let you women stick your nose into things. You women ought to stay out of what is none of your business. What goes on here is really none of your business. Why don't you stick to your church work and leave the legal work to us? Yeah. And one of the ladies said, I'll tell you what, this is church business. And eventually, there was an investigation launched. The jailer was forced to resign, and gradually things got better. So, the point of this story is that the women could have stayed in the church and just done things around the church for the church people. Or they chose to be salt and light. The salt burned and the light glared. And they changed things in their little corner of the world. And I think that is what Jesus asks us to do. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And he's talking about you and me. Salt and light. We are called to make a difference in our little emerald coast corner of the world because we are salt and light. Yes, indeed. That is who we are. During our, well, after our first service, um, I told Don I would give him credit. Don Boyes, he came to the first service, and, and he uh, said, I was thinking about a pickle. Go on. He says, once a cucumber is made a pickle, there's no turning back. You can't be a cucumber again. You're stuck. <laughs> And wait, there's more. And we definitely can buy into this. If you take the pickles and put in some other ingredients and spices, you can make them something really special, even though they're always going to be pickles. Hmm. In essence, he was saying, you are salt of the earth. You are a light of the world. You can't go back to a, a former life once you are salt of the earth. Hmm. You can't go back to being cucumbers. Thank God. <laughs> once we come to the table of the Lord, I don't know if there is any turning back because this is something that is so embedded, so internal with us that it is who we are. Remembering, cherishing these words that we hear perhaps every week, every time we worship at least. Jesus <coughs> preparing his disciples for what lay ahead, took bread and broke it and blessed it and shared it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat all of you. And pouring wine into a, a cup, and generally we envision the cup being a chalice. He noted that this cup is his blood shed for sins, our sins. In fact, it's the blood of the new covenant, the higher standard above the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, the covenant of love that Jesus brought about. And we celebrate that every time we come to the table, eating the bread, drinking the cup, until he comes.
busy culture is not surprising. This human tendency is even noted throughout writings of our Bible in stories told about God's people forgetting what he had done for them. During the Passover meal, the evening before he died, as the symbolic elements were shared for the first time, Jesus gave his famous command, do this in remembrance of me. At that time, Jesus gave us the cure for forgetfulness, remembrance. Remember the promises in God's word. Remember Jesus' sacrifice. Remember to praise him for all he's done. Let us pray. Lord, help me to never forget all the good things you do for me. Amen. And now we share the bread. And now the cup. things to each of us, but God is always there for us faithfully. We can trust him to provide us mercy. This offering today will show our faithfulness. We trust it will continue to provide blessings and reach those in need. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you can always trust, we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give you our whole lives to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. And you can give today by putting an offering in the plate or in the basket in the back. You can mail a check or you can do it through Giveify. For what it's worth, I guess, we receive uh, tithes and offerings in uh, each of those four ways. So. Um, Try to make it as easy as possible. <laughs> Jesus tells us we are salt and we are light. May we go from here and live above the law. Above the law that the uh, 
Pharisees and scribes did. Today I hope we've had some uh, perspectives to consider, our eyes open, so to speak. Our final song today in our worship is Open My Eyes That I May See, and then it goes on with the ears and, and our, our mouths that we can share the, the gospel story. If you've never made a commitment to Jesus, to follow him as your Lord and Savior, today is the day where you can celebrate the fact that you are salt and you are light. You are precious and chosen by God. Or perhaps you would want to invest your life in our ministries here, uh, ministries that, um, that try to reach out from our doorsteps to, to, uh, to all over the world. In fact, as we share our closing song, please join me in our song on page one, or 586, sharing from your heart. close of our formal worship time, we go from here to be salt and light in our world. And I invite you to come and toward the center and uh, share our closing chorus, perhaps joining hands. <laughs>
or salt and light, maybe even a pickle. Thank <laughs> 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 you.